Good morning. We are now going on the record at approximately 10.04 a.m. Eastern Time on, two, on Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. This is me, unit number one, in the video recorded deposition of James Martin in the matter of James Martin v. William Villa. This deposition is being held at 4949 Liberty Lane, Allentown, PA, 18106. My name is Jacob Sinowich from the firm Veritex, and I'm the videographer. The court reporter is Suzanne Toto from the firm Veritex. I am not authorized to administer an oath. I am not related to any party in this action, nor am I financially interested in the outcome. Counsel and all parties present in the room and everyone attending remotely will now state their appearances and affiliations for the record. If there are any objections to the proceedings, please state them at the time of your appearance, beginning with the noticing attorney. My name is Michael Shea, and I'm the attorney for Bill Villa Defendant. Uh, my name is Armando Brigandi from the firm of Sprague & Sprague, representing Jim Martin. I'm James B. Martin, uh, the plaintiff in this action. Cliff, perhaps you should state your appearance uh, through the uh, video connection. He might be on mute. I don't know. Doesn't say that. It says the computer's on mute. He must be here. I don't think that's necessary. Cliff, we have just identified ourselves, all of us here present in the room, myself, uh, Mr. Martin, and Mr. Brigandi. Uh, perhaps you should uh, state your appearance, uh, whom you are representing, and your participation by way of Zoom. Was that directed at me? Yes, Cliff, it was directed to you. All we need you to do is say, say who you are, whom you're, re whom you're representing, and how you're participating in the deposition. Um, my name is Clifford Haynes. I'm an attorney representing Bill Vila. Uh, I am uh, participating as an observer only. And I might also add that my client, Bill Villa, is uh, not present in the deposition room, but is viewing this deposition from a remote location. Hey, everybody. Hi. Will the court reporter please swear in the witness? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you God? I do. Mr. Martin, as you are aware, I represent the defendant, Bill Villa, in the defamation action you have filed against him. You would agree that Mr. Villa is a resident of Lehigh County, correct? I believe that's true. Y you said so in your complaint, didn't you? I think we identified his address in the complaint, yes. And as a resident of Lehigh County, he would be a constituent of yours as district attorney, correct? Correct. And you would agree that, in general, uh, your constituents, residents, have a constitutional right to criticize you or question you in your performance as duties as district attorney. Correct? I would not agree necessarily to the statement that you just made, Mr. Shea. And why would you not agree to that? Because although they have a right to criticize, they don't have a right to defame me. And I understand your qualification. But in general, without defaming you, uh, residents, your constituents in Lehigh County, do have a constitutional right to question your actions as district attorney and to criticize those actions. I suppose. Okay. Now, in your complaint, you point out that you have served as district attorney since 1998. Correct. How many times have you been reelected as district attorney?
Six. And each time that you were elected or reelected, you took an oath of office for performance of your duties as district attorney. Correct. And since you've done it six times, I suspect that you can recite that oath by memory, can you not? No. All right. Can you please give us the gist of that oath? That I uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and uh, do so with fidelity. Now, in this particular case, uh, you are not performing your duties as district attorney in the filing of this defamation action against my client. Is that correct? That's correct. I filed it on my individual behalf. Right. Uh, and despite the fact that you filed it on your individual behalf, it all relates to his criticisms of you and your performance as district attorney, correct? It relates to his unfounded and defamatory criticism of me. But it does relate to your performance of your duties as district attorney, does it not? He unjustly criticizes my performance as district attorney, yes. Right. Uh, and I understand your qualifications. Uh, and well, Mr. Shea, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to allow you to put words into my mouth. Okay? Not putting words into yes, your you mouth. Are. No, I'm not. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, well, let's put it this way. Has he criticized you in any other aspect of your life other than your professional performance of your duties as district attorney? Yes. In what way? Well, at one point I was recovering from um, cancer surgery and I had a bandage on my eye and I had to appear in front of cameras uh, in a press conference and he posted something on his blog about how funny I looked and, and how I had a, I forget the exact word, but a big puppy of a bandage, I think. Uh, he criticized, so he criticized my appearance in that situation. He criticized my driving on one occasion when he happened to be at Lehigh Country Club and he saw a vehicle that I was driving that had yellow paint stains on the uh, side door. Uh, made a mention of that in the blog. That had nothing to do with my duties as district attorney. Right. My personal appearance clearly didn't. Were any of those things said during the WAEB interviews which you describe in your complaint? Not that I recall. Were any of those things said uh, at any time before you filed this lawsuit? Yeah, both of them. They were, they were uh, published on his blog. Right. Do you mention those in your complaint? I don't think so. Right. In this particular case, you are challenging uh, Mr. Villa's constitutional right to express the opinions and facts that he did during those WAEB interviews, correct? No, I'm not. Obje I'm not. Object, objection to form. Objection to form. If you, if you uh, understand the question, you can answer. I'm not challenging his constitutional right. I'm challenging his defam def defamatory statements that he made about me on 11 or 12 uh, broadcasts on WAEB. And you are aware, are you not, that... Uh, his defense in this case is that he had a constitutionally protected right to say those things. No, I'm not aware that he's raised it as a constitutional right or protected right to, to defame me. <clears throat> he has, however, stated that he has a constitutional right to say the things that he said about you and about your handling of these cases. Uh, and that, and, that, and that, it, that it was not defamatory. That's, that's his position, isn't it? Well, I know he claims that, that what he was expressing is not defamatory. I don't think I've ever heard Mr. Villa claim that he had a constitutional right to say those things. Have you been following the legal proceedings in this case? Yes. Uh, were you aware of the preliminary objections that were filed to your complaint? I was aware that they were dismissed. Were you aware that they had been filed? Yeah. Were you aware of the basis of those preliminary objections? Five or six years ago, I haven't looked at them in that length of time. Any re recollection of constitutional defenses being raised in those preliminary objections? I have no such recollection. Right. I'm not denying that they were, I just don't recall. Now, usually before I would begin questioning a witness at a deposition, many of whom are attending a deposition for the first time, I would give uh, in instructions about the process. You are an attorney. You've been an attorney for a long time. I assume you are familiar with the deposition process. I am. Uh, 
have you ever attended a deposition as a plaintiff in a lawsuit? No. Have you ever been a plaintiff in a lawsuit? No. Have you ever been a defendant in a lawsuit? Many times as district attorney. Right. And have you given depositions in those lawsuits? No. They are usually dismissed because of a qualified privilege right. or immunity. Is this the first time you have ever been deposed personally? I believe so. I don't recall any other time. Can you please uh, state your residence? I reside at 3845 Hawthorne Drive, Center Valley, PA 18034. And is that in Lehigh County? Yes. How long have you resided there? 31 years. And you were residing there at the time of the interviews uh, involving WAEB on the uh, Bobby Gunther Walsh radio talk show. Yes, is that I correct? Was. With whom do you live at your residence now? My wife, Patricia M. Martin. And when were you and Mrs. Martin married? July 15, 1989. And other than to Patricia Martin, have you been married to anyone else? Yes. Okay, to whom? I was married to Nancy Barrett Cunningham from September 2, 1967. We separated in October of 1986. I believe our divorce was final in September of 1988, as I recall. Does she have any involvement with or knowledge about any of the matters that you have raised in your, raised in your defamation action against Does my Nancy? Yes. Not that I'm aware of. And how about Patricia? Yes, of course. And what knowledge does she have? Well, she has knowledge of the filing of the lawsuit. She has knowledge of the defamatory statements made by Mr. Villa. She has knowledge of how they have impacted upon me. General knowledge about the entire situation. All right. Is she a potential witness if this matter proceeds to trial? I would think, yeah, right. possibly. And I have to consult with my attorney about that. Right. And although she has not been named as a plaintiff, would you be willing to voluntarily produce her for a deposition without a subpoena? I'd have to consult with my lawyer about okay. Do you have any children? Two. And what are their names and ages, please? Rachel Barrett Martin, uh, born June 18, 1968, so she's approaching her 53rd birthday. Kristen Cunningham Martin, born August 3, 1969, approaching her 52nd birthday. And do either of your children have any knowledge about the issues and matters raised in your defamation complaint against my client? I believe so. Uh, are they potential witnesses at the time of trial? I doubt it. What but again, I would want to reserve the right to discuss that sure. with my lawyer. Uh, what information potentially would they have about the issues raised in your defamation action? Well, they've likely been privy to conversations about it, and uh, both of them I think on occasion, um, although they both live out of state, one in California and the other now in New Mexico, they both uh, frequently will follow what's uh, in the news in Lehigh County. So, and, and I believe that they have, at least from time to time, seen Mr. Villa's blog. Now I'd like to move on to your educational background. Wh where did you attend and graduate from college? Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. I received a Bachelor of Science degree in history in 1967. At that time, it was known as Mount St. Mary's College. And by the way, what is your date of birth? July 11, 1945. Where did you go to law school? Temple University School of Law in Philadelphia. And when did you graduate from there? 1972. At any time, have you served in the United States military? No, I was uh, 1Y when I graduated from college. And what is 1Y? Uh, 
they would only call me in the event of an emergency. I attempted to, to enlist in the Marine Corps, uh, had passed the qualifications for officer candidate school, but was uh, rejected for service because of a knee condition. Now, while you were at Temple Law School, did you take a course or courses in constitutional law? Yes. And how many constitutional law courses did you take? I believe one that was titled constitutional law. Right. Did you take any other courses where you dealt with constitutional issues? Criminal law, criminal procedure, antitrust law. Did you take any courses where you studied uh, law relating to defamation, libel, slander? Torts. And would that have been an introductory first year law school course in torts? It was a first year course, lasted the entire year. And since your graduation from law school and practicing law, have you taken any continuing legal education uh, seminars on defamation actions? Uh, no, of course I've taken continuing legal education courses. I don't think I ever took any on defamation. Well, specifically, have you taken any courses on the law relating to uh, defamation since the WAEB interviews involved in this lawsuit? No. Now, what date were you admitted to the uh, Pennsylvania Bar? November of 1972, I believe the date might have been November 11th, but I'm not entirely sure. I know it was November of 72. And at that time, were you sworn in at the Lehigh County Bar? No, I was sworn in in front of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia at City Hall. And have you ever been formally uh, sworn in at the Lehigh County Bar, yes. the court. When was that? That would have been January of 1970. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm not certain. At the time, there was a rule, a local rule in place that required you to be a resident of Lehigh County to be, a, 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 and that was to be admitted to the Bar Association. Um, I, I was living in Lansdale when I started to practice law in Lehigh County in August of 1973. Um, I recall being admitted to the Bar Association in January of 74, which was the first bar meeting after I moved to Le back into Lehigh County. I, I think I was admitted to Lehigh County Court sometime in September or October of 73, but I don't recall specifically. And what course have you been admitted to practice before uh, since your graduation of law school? I've been admitted to practice before the United States uh, Supreme Court to the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, the United States Court of Appeals for the Eastern Di for the Third Circuit. And. Uh, The time is now approximately 10.23 a.m. We are now going off the record. The time is now approximately 10.23 a.m. We are now going back on the record. In addition to the Lehigh County Court of Common Pleas, have you been admitted to practice in any other courts of common pleas in Pennsylvania? Well, I have practiced in other courts of common pleas in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure I ever went through any formal admission procedure. Now, you indicate... Uh, as I understand it, Mr. Shea, when you are admitted to the bar of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, you are free and able to practice in other courts of common pleas without formal admission. And, and I understand that, but I think you indicated earlier that you were living uh, in Montgomery County at the time you graduated from law school, or shortly thereafter, is that correct? I was living in Philadelphia at the time I graduated from law school. I moved to, 
Lansdale and Montgomery County in September or October of 1972. Right. Did you ever appear before the Montgomery County Court of Common Pleas? No. For well, admission? Strike that. Not at that time. I, I, Subsequently. I, I, I didn't complete my question. Okay. I, did you ever appear before the Montgomery County Court of Common Pleas for a formal admission? No. Okay. Now, after graduating from law school, where did you first work and practice as an attorney? In Allentown, Pennsylvania, with William C. Wickheiser, Esquire, starting in August of 1973. And how long were you affiliated with Mr. Wickheiser? Until 1984. And when you were in practice with Mr. Wickheiser, were you uh, an associate attorney, a partner, did that status change at any time? I was an associate to begin with, and we formed the partnership, I believe, in 1989. I'm, I'm sorry, in 1979. And during the period of time that you practiced with uh, Attorney Wickheiser, what type of legal work did you do? Very general practice. Uh, anything that walked in the door other than bankruptcy, but I was... Uh, I held part-time positions as uh, an assistant public defender for about two and a half years, and as uh, an assistant DA for about a year and a half, and then subsequently as first assistant DA starting in 1981. I left uh, the firm of Wickheiser and Martin in 84, but I continued on as first assistant until 1986. Uh, during that period of time that you were with Mr. Wickheiser uh, and had positions with the DA's office, were they part-time positions? Yes, I think I stated that. And your position as a public defender, that was also a part-time position? Yes. What type of cases did you handle when you were a public defender? The whole gamut of criminal cases, including homicides. And why did you and Mr. Wickheiser uh, end your f relationship in 1984? Well, first, we ended it in a very amicable fashion. I uh, had tried a case with Dick Stevens, who was a named principal partner in Butch Hutters Tallman, later Butch Hutters Tallman, Stevens, and Johnson. I had a desire to restrain my, civil, my private practice to uh, litigation. I thought the opportunity were uh, better in a larger firm setting for me to do that. And when did you start with Butts, Hutters, and Tallman? I believe it was August of 1984. And when you started there, were you an associate attorney or a partner? I was an associate for about a year. And after a year, you became a partner? Yes. And how long were you with Butts, Hutters, and Tallman? Well, I, I was with Butts, Hutters, Tallman until the name changed and they added Stevens and Johnson, which, as I recall, was around 1986. Uh, I remained with Butts, Hutters, Tallman, Stevens, and Johnson until that firm split in approximately 1989. Afterwards, I remained with Stevens and Johnson. And how long did you remain with Stevens and Johnson? Until my appointment as district attorney in January of uh, 1998. Now, during the time that you were with Butts, Hutters, and Tallman and its successor, did you continue in your role as assistant district attorney? Well, I was an assistant district attorney on a part-time basis from February 1977 until June 1978. I ceased being an assistant district attorney in June of 78 and was out of the office. I became first assistant district attorney uh, to then district attorney William H. Platt uh, in June of 1981. And I'm sorry, how long did you continue in that role? Until 
October 1986. So was there a period of time when you were with Butts, Hutters, and Tallman that you were still an assistant district attorney? Well, I was first assistant district attorney. Right, first assistant district which attorney. There is a distinction okay. uh, between 1981 and, and uh, 1986. So, yeah, I was with Butts, Hutters, Tallman from 84 to 89. So 84 to 86, I was first assistant DA. Part time. And why did you stop being first assistant district attorney? Because I had 13 partners who wanted me back in the office full time. When you were with Butts, Hutters, and Tallman and its successor, what type of legal work did you do? Did commercial litigation, I did some insurance defense litigation, I did Malpra medical malpractice defense litigation. I did some family law re reluctantly because I really didn't want to do that, but I was a person who had more experience than most of the other partners. During any of the period of time that you were involved in private practice, first with Mr. Wickheiser, then subsequently with Butts, Hutters, and Tallman, did you ever represent a plaintiff in a defamation action? No, I think I consulted with potential plaintiffs in, in one or two potential defamation actions, but they never ripened into a lawsuit. Did you ever represent a defendant in a defamation action? I don't think so. I don't recall. I think you indicated a little while ago you were appointed as district attorney? That's correct. Right. When were you appointed? Well, the meeting of the Board of Commissioners took place sometime in early January of 1996. I was sworn in as District Attorney on January 26. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Early in January of 1998, I was sworn in on January 26, 1998. So January 26, 1998 or 1999? 1998. I was elected in 1999. The appointment was to fill an unexpired term which was held by Robert L. Steinberg, who was elected to the bench and assumed the bench on the first Monday of January, 1998. And were you sworn in uh, as district attorney pursuant to that appointment? Yes. And how long did you uh, continue in your uh, appointed role before, re -ele before election? Well, from January 26, 1998 until I was elected on the Tuesday following the first Monday in November of 1999. I don't recall what date that was. I suppose technically I would have still been serving under the appointment until the first Monday of January of 1990, Did you have any opposition either in a primary or in a general election? Uh, when you first ran for district attorney? Yes, I had opposition in the general election, not in the primary. My opponent was attorney Glenn Clark. And we've already been through the fact that you have been reelected uh, as district attorney. At the time your complaint was filed, you indicated that you were elected to serve four four-year terms in 1999, 2003, 2007, and 2011. That's correct. And you have since been re-elected uh, for two more terms? Correct. And what years were those re-elections? 2015 and 2019. And both of those Elections took place uh, after the WAEB interviews involved in this lawsuit, correct? Correct. And both of those elections took place after you filed the lawsuit in this defamation action, correct? Yes. Now, in 2015, did you have any opposition, uh, either in a primary or a general election? No. And how about 2019? 
I had no opposition in a primary. I had an opponent on the Democrat side who um, won that primary election and uh, unfortunately contracted throat cancer and withdrew. So at the upon his withdrawal, I had no opponent. The Democrat Party could have appointed someone to take his place, but did not. Now, in any of those elections that took place after the WAEB interviews and your filing of this lawsuit, was there any mention made by anyone of Mr. Villa's WAEB interviews? Not that I'm aware of. Not publicly. Anymore. How about privately? Well, there were people who talked to me about, about Mr. Villa's uh, appearances on WAEB. I don't know that anybody, uh, some people talked to me about uh, the fact that I had filed a lawsuit against him. I don't recall specifics or specific names. But, but in terms of your re-election campaigns, even 2019, when you, for a brief period of time, had an, an opponent uh, was any mention made of that during any uh, campaign speeches, talks, writings, anything like that? Well, it never developed into a contest. And, and when Mr. Moreno, who was the Democratic oppo uh, opponent, you know, there was no debate or anything because it was still the primary season. How about before he withdrew? Did he make any mention, to your knowledge, in public appearances, I, I in, writing, in, in writing or any other form? about uh, issues raised by Mr. Villa in the WAEB interviews? I don't know. But you're not aware of any? I said I don't know. <clears throat> Is that the same thing as being not aware of any? Of course. All right. At any time during your uh, tenure as district attorney, have you filed and proceeded with any prosecutions against a defendant for perjury involving a civil action? I don't recall specifically, Mr. Shea. I know that there have been occasions where um, allegations have been made that people have perjured themselves and depositions or marital disputes or custody disputes. I don't recall any that actually ripened into a prosecution. Now, you are familiar with uh, the section of the Criminal Code, uh, 18 PA C period, S period, section 4904, relating to unsworn falsification to authorities? Yes. And a matter of fact, you signed a verification to the complaint, uh, testing to the f testing that the f facts stated in the complaint are true and correct to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief, with the understanding that statements made in the complaint are made subject to the penalties relating to unsworn falsification to authorities. Yes. Right. Have you ever, in your role as district attorney, prosecuted? Uh, any defendant for a violation of that code provision relating to unsworn falsification to authorities? I don't recall. I may have. Nothing that sticks out, though? No. Right. Now, once again, calling your attention to paragraph 14 of the complaint. Do you have a copy for the witness? I do, if he doesn't already have a copy. If we may go off the record for a second while I look for it. The time is now approximately 10.39 a.m. We are now going off the record. The time is now approximately 10.40 a.m. We are now going back on the record. Mr. Martin, your attorney uh, requested that I furnish you a copy of the complaint that you filed in this 
defamation action against Mr. Villa, and I have, pursuant to his request, now provided you a copy. Uh, does that appear to be to you to be a true and correct copy of the complaint that you have filed in this case? Yes. Uh, I was calling your attention to paragraph 14, which I've previously discussed, uh, where you allege that you have faithfully served the citizens of Lehigh County as district attorney since 1998 and that you've been elected to serve four four-year terms in 1999, 2003, 2007, and 2011. And you state Martin has been practicing law for 40 years, most of which he served as a prosecutor in Lehigh County. And since I initially questioned you, uh, in addition to the years listed in that paragraph, we also have 2015 and 2019 when you have been reelected, correct? Correct. And now you would acknowledge that you are certainly an elected official, correct? Correct. And that the years that you have served as district attorney, you have been a public figure, correct? Correct. Right. I'd like to call your attention to paragraph 22 of the complaint. And in that paragraph, you state from February 20th, 2014 to August 4th, 2014, while Villa was a guest on the Bobby Gunther Walsh radio show broadcast by Clear Channel on WAEB, defendants Villa, Walsh, and Clear Channel published numerous false, malicious, and defamatory statements concerning Martin and his management of criminal prosecutions in Lehigh County including the prosecutions of Robert Labar, Chris Squires, Amber Washko, Jennifer Geringer, and James Lauer for DUI-related crimes, which statements were made with actual malice, i.e. knowledge of their falsity or reckless disregard for their truth or falsity. Did I read that paragraph correctly? Yes. And the specific criminal prosecutions listed there Labar, Squires, Washko, Geringer, Lauer, uh, as you've indicated, were all for DUI-related crimes. Is that correct? Yes. With regard to those uh, criminal prosecutions, they were the focus of uh, Mr. Villa's criticisms of you in the handling of those prosecutions, correct? They were the focus of Mr. Villa's defamatory comments about me in the handling of those prosecutions. But they all related to those prosecutions, correct? There may have been some other cases, Mr. Shea, I don't recall, but I do recall that he mentioned these cases specifically. Well, these are the ones you specifically allege in your complaint. Yes, I understand. Right. And we may have covered this already, but I wish to clarify it. With regard to those WAEB interviews, there were no personal attacks by Mr. Villa outside the performance of your duties as district attorney, were there? Not that I recall. Now, we've discussed your uh, taking of constitutional law in law school and other courses related to constitutional law. Uh, during the course of your tenure in law school, did you have any study of the Supreme Court decision in New York Times versus Sullivan? Yes, I did. And you're aware that that decision uh, imposes a higher standard on public officials in defamation actions than it does in private, private citizens who are not public officials, correct? Yes. And you would agree that under New York Times versus Sullivan and the, loss and, and the reported cases following that Supreme Court decision uh, that you have a burden of proving actual malice in this case. Is that correct? Actual malice or reckless disregard of the truth. Are you say, you're saying those are two different things? I think they are. 
or a reckless disregard for the truth may equate to malice for purposes of the case law. I don't specifically recall at the moment. Would you agree that this is a correct holding in the Supreme Court decision of New York Times versus Sullivan that the constitutional guarantees require, we think, a federal rule that prohibits a public official from recovering damages for defamatory falsehoods relating to his official conduct unless he proves that the statement was made with actual malice, that is, with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. I would agree with that statement. This objection to the form is it calls for a legal conclusion, but you've answered it. Sorry. Are okay. you really going to object to answers that call for a legal conclusion sure. from, from District Attorney Martin? Yes. Okay. In any event, you are aware that you have a higher burden uh, than a non-public figure who files a defamation action yes. in this particular lawsuit. And you already acknowledged that you are a public figure as that term is defined in New York Times versus Sullivan and, and, its subs and the subsequent cases. And it's common understanding and, you know, constitutionally, yeah, I'm a public figure or a public official. Now, getting back to the complaint which is in front of you, uh, what was your involvement in the drafting of that complaint? Uh, I'm sorry? What was your involvement, yourself, in the drafting of that complaint? Did you participate in the drafting? Well, I consulted with my attorneys. Sure. I know, but my question is, did you actually get involved in the drafting? No. And with regard to these specific allegations in the complaint about uh, what Mr. Vela said during the WAEB interviews, uh, did you have any involvement in pointing those out uh, to your attorneys? We're, we're getting, now you're getting into, well, we can go off. The time is now approximately 10.47 a.m. We are now going off the record. The time is now approximately 10.49 a.m. We are now going back on the record. Mr. Martin, I'm not entirely clear by your counsel's uh, objection whether he's instructing you to not answer my question, and perhaps we should have clarification of that. Well, perhaps we should have discussed this off the video while we were off the video discussing it. So okay, we can do that. Back. Let's go back off the video. The time is now approximately 10.49 a.m. We are now going off the record. The time is now approximately 10.52 a.m. We are now going back on the record. Mr. Martin, calling your attention to the complaint once again, can you point to the paragraphs in the complaint that you drafted? What do you mean by drafted? That you dictated, wrote out, uh, recorded? Uh, uh, objection again. This is just ridiculous. Objection. We can go off the record. The time is now approximately 10.53 a.m. We are now going off the record. The time is now approximately 10.54 a.m. We are now going back on the record. Mr. Barton, you did verify the complaint that's before you right now. Is that correct? Yes. And with regard to the facts set forth in that complaint, you have verified that they are true and correct to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief. Yes. Correct. Did you review, and I will get into this in greater detail later, but did you review any transcripts of the WAEB interviews with Mr. Villa before the complaint was drafted? Yes. Okay. When did you first review those transcripts? <coughs> I don't recall. And who had those interviews transcribed? I believe the law offices of Sprague and Sprague had transcriptions. I also had um, discs. Discs from what? Oh, the broadcast. And where did you get those from? I made them. 
And how did you make them? From what? From the broadcast itself. Where did you obtain the broadcast? In public. All right. Specifically, where did you get the broadcasts from? From the radio. All right. You requested them from the radio. No, I didn't request anything from the radio. <laughs> I listened to the radio. You listened to the radio. And, and I, had it, I had it recorded on disc. Do you know if your attorneys have provided those discs in response to requests for production? I don't know. And what interview, what shows did you uh, record? I believe all of them, except perhaps for the first. Do you still have those discs? I believe so, yes. They're also in the possession of Mr. Villa, who plays them on his blog every day and has for the last seven years. He plays them every day? Well, he has them. They're accessible every day. I thought you said he plays them every day. No, well, I misspoke. All right. How often does he play them? I don't know that he plays them at all. If you go on to his blog, you can access them and listen to them. So, in fact, he's been defaming me every day that he's published his blog since uh, he put them up there sometime in 2015 or 14. Right? But they are recordings of the WAEB interviews. Yes. Now, going back to the complaint, if you would turn to paragraph 46 of the complaint. And in 46 subparagraph E, you say that the defamatory statements by Mr. Villa subjected you to emotional distress, mental anguish, embarrassment, and humiliation. Correct. Right. These interviews subjected you to emotional distress? Yes. And you're making a claim for damages for that emotional distress? I believe the complaint states that. Yeah. Right. Can you describe for me what that emotional distress was? Well, Mr. Shea, when you're a public official, Forget that. I mean, when you are a person who values his integrity and his reputation for honesty, truthfulness, credibility, uh, I believe that my reputation is the most important asset that I have. Uh, when you are a lawyer, your reputation, I think, assumes even more importance. And when you are a public official and specifically a district attorney, your reputation is even more important in that context. Uh, Mr. Villa has accused me of being corrupt, dishonest. He's accused me of fixing cases. Uh, he's accused me of incompetence. All of those things uh, coupled together uh, and the damage to my reputation. Uh, if you accept what WAEB publishes and what Bobby Gunther Walsh trumpets and what Bill Villa himself has trumpeted, um, those broadcasts were heard by over 50,000 people in the Lehigh Valley. So, yes, that has caused me emotional distress. Okay, well, let's get back to my question. Okay. I think I've answered what, your what question. Was objection, objection to okay. that statement. He answered your question. No, no, he didn't. <clears throat> he, he, he made, he made a, a, a statement of, of his case, not of his emotional distress. No, oh, I, I how, told you why I suffered emotional distress. Okay. How was that emotional distress manifested? Well, I was saddened by the allegations. I was embarrassed by the uh, uh, allegations. As the complaint states, it's humiliating to have somebody make those type of allegations. Did you consult any uh, medical professional, uh, psychologist, anyone about your emotional distress? No. Were there any physical manifestations of your emotional distress? Well, I think there were occasions when I lost some sleep over. 
Who is your family doctor? Um, at the time of the complaint, it was Dennis McGorry. Now it is Dennis McGorry, Jr. And where is that doctor's office located? Um, <laughs> they just moved their offices. I think it's on Citronia Road now. Too. I haven't been there since they moved. Have you been to see uh, either of the doctors, McGorry, at any time since WAEB interviews? Of course. Every six months. Okay. And during the course of those uh, regular six-month checkups, did you mention the emotional distress, the, the sleeplessness that you were having, uh, anything about uh, the impact of those WAEB interviews on you? I don't recall mentioning. I don't think I did. Do you know if you filled out any questionnaires during those doctor's visits about whether you were experiencing emotional distress, sleeplessness? Uh, I don't recall. Any. Anything that would relate to emotional distress? Well, I, I know, notice over the past several years that every time you visit a doctor, they ask you if there's anything going on in your life by way of a questionnaire. I've never answered that affirmatively, if that's your question. Right. You've never mentioned uh, Mr. Villa in the WAEB interviews uh, I didn't to say I never mentioned them. I said I don't recall mentioning them. Okay. So if we were to subpoena those records, uh, we could ascertain, first of all, what answers you gave to questions about emotional distress and whether you mentioned to your doctors about uh, the WAEB interviews, Mr. Villa, and this lawsuit? I, I don't know whether you could or not, but I would certainly think there would be an objection based on invasion of privacy grounds and HIPAA. <laughs> right. Despite the fact that you're making a claim for damages here for emotional distress. Objection to form. He stated he did not seek uh, medical treatment for it, but you can, you can answer. I did not ever seek medical treatment for emotional distress, either medical or psychological or psychiatric or any other type of treatment. Whether I mentioned it or not, I think, I don't recall. Okay. But we'd have to see the records in order to find out whether you did or didn't. I don't know whether the records would disclose whether I did or didn't. Right. And the only way we can do that is to see those records. Isn't well, it? you try to do that, Mr. Shea. Okay. And we'll, it'll be met with an objection. So you're still maintaining your claim for emotional distress? Yes. Are you still experiencing emotional distress? From time to time when Mr. Villa publishes or continues to publish things that I become aware of on his blog or his Facebook page. And how does that emotional distress uh, manifest itself? The same way it always has for the last uh, you know, 15 years now. 15 years? 16 years. 16 years. No, 15 years. Mr. Villa has been defaming me from the first time I ever heard of Mr. Villa in April of, 9th of 2006, 2006. Now, you don't mention any of those in your complaint, do you? I think we would make reference to his blog. His blog before the WAEB interviews or after the WAEB interviews? I think continuously. But Wait, continuously before the WAEB interviews? Mr. Shea, I don't know without specifically going through every allegation of the complaint. I don't think we want to waste our time doing that. I know Mr. Villa has published a blog that he established for the simple reason to attack me, and I think it was established in 2007 or thereabouts. Did you take any action against him before the WAEB interviews? No, I did not. Did you retain counsel with regard to a possible defamation action against, no, I Mr. Did not. against Mr. Villa? Uh, before the WAEB interviews? No. And how often do you experience the emotional distress now? How often? Periodically. I can't answer it more accurately than that. And when you say periodically, are we talking about once a week, once a month, once every it, couple it, of it months? It depends in large, large measure what Mr. Villa does to promote it. And how does he promote it? On his blog, on his Facebook page. People bring to my attention things that he said about me on his Facebook page. Do you read his blog and Facebook page? 
I occasionally read his blog just to see if there's anything new on it. I don't ever read his Facebook page. Okay, with regard to his blog, when you say occasionally, how frequently do you look at it? Once a month, okay. once every 10 days, I don't know. Now, in paragraph 46E, you also mentioned uh, mental anguish. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by mental anguish? That the things that he has said about me, which are defamatory, um, prey on my, on my mind, that it, it concerns me, concerns me as a public official, it concerns me in terms of, of how uh, my constituents view me and view my performance as district attorney. Concerns me as to how my children and grandchildren uh, might view me if they happen to access Mr. Villa's blog or listen to the radio broadcasts that still appear on his blog. Other than Mr. Villa, has anyone uh, spoken negatively about you or criticized you uh, that has caused you additional emotional distress and mental anguish? Yeah, I'm sure that there have people who have criticized me other than Mr. Villa and uh, during the course of my career as district attorney. Um, I don't recall suffering mental anguish as a result of any of that. Right, let's talk about since the WAEB interviews. Has anyone else criticized you publicly uh, or privately uh, about those interviews? Well, what do you mean by privately? I wouldn't know if they've criticized me privately unless no. they said it to me. Press, that's what I mean. Did they say it to you? No. Did someone come up to you and say, I'm not going to vote for you because of what Bill Villa said? No one ever said that. Right. There have been people who have said, you know, they heard, they heard the interview. Those people who have heard the interview, did they indicate uh, or say anything to you negatively about, about you as a result of those interviews? I recall being told I was really being beaten up by Bobby Gunther Walsh and Bill Vela. I would assume that that's negative. All right. But have any of those people said, as a result of listening to those interviews, I'm not going to associate with you, I'm not going to play golf with you, <laughs> I'm not going to vote for you? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Have you suffered any economic losses or harm as a result of those WAEB interviews and Mr. Villa's blog postings? We've made no claim for any economic damages. So the answer to my question then is you, no. have, you have not suffered any economic losses or harm. Is that correct? Right. Now, moving back in paragraph 46 to sub, uh, sub E, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, sub D, sub D. You allege that because of Mr. Villa's defamation, you experienced, probably not grammatically correct the way I'm phrasing it, but in subparagraph D you say, I, I can read it, Mr. Shaw. Okay. But I, I would like to read it for the record. Okay. Detract from his dignity, respect, esteem, and effectiveness as a lawyer and district attorney. All right. First of all, as a result of Mr. Villa's interviews and blog postings, your abilities as a lawyer uh, and effectiveness as a lawyer were diminished? Well, I think in the context that I am both a lawyer and a district attorney, yeah. So you have not been as effective as a district attorney since those interviews? I don't think that's what it means or not intended to mean. What it, what it means to me is that 
in the eyes of the public who heard those interviews, they would question my effectiveness as district attorney. Okay, but I'm reading this paragraph, and it states that the interviews detracted from your effectiveness as a lawyer and district attorney. Well, uh, are, you, are, you, uh, are you saying that somehow these interviews affected your effectiveness as a district attorney? Well, you have to read the preface to the paragraph, which reads, quote, defendants' false, malicious, and defamatory statements, innuendo, and implications have harmed Mr. Martin in that they have tended to, and then pick up D, detract from his dignity, respect, esteem, and effectiveness as a lawyer and district attorney. All right. Well, as I read that, you're alleging that uh, as a result of Mr. Villa's uh, WAEB interviews, uh, and that the interviews have tended to detract from your effectiveness as district attorney. Is that a true statement? Yes. So you're no longer as effective as a district attorney since those interviews, uh, as a result of those interviews? No, that's not true. Well, what, are, what, what do you mean I by think that? I've tried to explain it to you, Mr. Shea. I'm, this is, is couched in terms of how the people who heard those interviews view me, not as how I view myself. All right, so the people who heard you think you were not as effective as a district attorney? Not people who have heard me, people who have heard Mr. Villa's interviews by okay. Bobby Gunther Walsh on WAEB. Okay, and who has told you that they no longer think you are as effective as a district attorney? No one would have the temerity to tell me that. So your answer is no one has told you that? Correct. And then in 46F, you say that the actions of Mr. Villa have tended to interfere with your personal, professional, and family life. Correct. And how, how has it interfered with your personal, professional, and family life? Well, I think I've already indicated that it was upsetting to my wife, Patricia, to have me attacked in that manner. Um, Personally, it's been, uh, for reasons I've already stated, it's affected me. And in terms of my professional life, uh, I, I believe that uh, there are, among the 50,000 people who heard these interviews, uh, probably a fair number think that I'm unprofessional or incompetent or corrupt or fixed cases. So that's, that affects my professional life. What evidence do you have that people who listened to those interviews uh, felt as you have just described? I don't know that I have any at the moment. Okay. May we go off the record a moment, please? Well, we're doing that. I'd like to take a yeah, minute I, break. I'll, I need to use the restroom, too. My okay. coffee's kicking in. Right. The time is now approximately 11.13 a.m. We are now going off the record.